how to prepare for life's disasters. Yan po ang ating pag-aaral ngayon. Paano nga ba naghahanda para sa maraming mga dilubyo na pwedeng dumating sa buhay? Salamat Panginoon dahil kayo ay pwede naming lapitan sa mga oras ng kagipitan. At tinuturoan nyo rin kami paano maghanda bago pa man dumating ang ganitong mga pagkakataon. Sa sandaling ito, Panginoon, turuan niyo po kami how to prepare for life's disasters. At ganun din naman, nagpapalinis kami sa inyo, patawarin niyo po kami sa aming mga kasalanan, sa mga sinasadya at sinasadya ang mga pagkakamali. At patawarin niyo rin kami, Panginoon, sa mga kasalanan namin sa aming kapwa, sa aming panguhusga, sa mga hindi namin naiintindihan, sa aming mga pagsasalita ng di maganda, sa aming mga iniisip na hindi ka nais-nais. Cleanse us, enable us to behold your glory and to understand your message for us today. Take over, O God, be our speaker. Use your servant only as your instrument. And may we hear your voice. Father, we seek you. We ask for your blessing. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Life's disasters. Ano-ano nga ba ang mga yan? Isa, sudden poverty. Yung biglang nawalan ka ng trabaho, biglang nawalan kayo ng hanap buhay, biglang naubos ang inyong mga pinakakakitaan, malaking malaking disaster kasi may magugutom, may mga hindi maipapagamot, may mga hindi mababayaran. Suddenness could add grave weight to a financial disaster. Mas bigla, mas mahirap dalhin. Isa pa po na disaster sa buhay is grave illness. It's a grabbing sakit. And of course, it becomes worse if sudden and with poverty. Yung magkasakit ka, disaster na yun. Pag bigla pa, wala kang paghahanda. At may kasama pang paghihirap dahil wala kang pera, lalo namang mahirap. Another disaster is grave fall. Yung may mga pagkakada pa, pagbagsak ang tao from failure, disgrace, and disempowerment. Again, it is worse if with poverty. Misan hindi mo alam, fortunes are reversed. People that are at the top suddenly fall and get to the bottom. People who are honored could be disgraced. Such things can happen. Another disaster is grave emotional pain. Bereavement. Mamatayan ka ng mahal sa buhay. Abandonment hindi mo inaasahan, bigla kang iniwan ng iyong mahal sa buhay o ng inaasahan mo. Betrayal is a disastrous experience. Again, it becomes worse if with poverty. Yung problema, nadodoble pag wala kang pera. Iniwan ka ng asawa mo, pero may pera ka, malungkot ka, masakit, pero at least, meron kang panggasto sa pangangailangan mo. Gusto mo maglibang, meron kang gagasasin. Nagkasakit ka, mahirap yon pero may pampadoktor ka, nakakadgaan-gaan kahit papano. So, laging nadodoble ang bigat pagka walang financial resources. Disasters become worse when accompanied by poverty. Kaya ang mahalaga sa buhay, meron kang some form of insurance, savings, investments. Meron kang konting pwedeng sandalaan sa biglang oras ang pangangailangan. Isipin ninyo yung mga disaster sa buhay ni Job. Lahat ng binanggit natin, nagsabay-sabay sa kanya yon. Bereavement, abandonment, fall, sickness, and poverty. Nagsabay-sabay. Nando na lahat. Pero, he survived because of his great faith in God. Common denominator of disasters, need for others. Lahat po nang binagin natin mga disaster sa buhay, may magkakamukha silang isang uri ng kulay at hugis na nangangailangan yung dinapuan ng disaster ng tulong ng kapwa. Need for help. Need for sympathy. Pag tayo naman ay dinadagu ka ng kapalaran, dinadapuan ng hirap sa buhay, yan ang kailangan natin. Tulong, maaaring physical, financial, maaari namang emotional or spiritual. 
yung alam mo na may kakampi ka. Yung alam mo na merong sumusuporta sa'yo, merong nagsisimpatya sa'yo, at nakikiisang loob. Disasters weaken people to the point of needing other people. Yan ang nangyayari pag may disaster. Nangihina tayo. At di man dati, ngayon nangangailangan na tayo ng tulong. How to prepare for life's disasters? Isang mahalagang uh, bagay na maunawa natin, paano tayo maghahanda para sa pagdating ng mga dilugyo sa buhay? We will be learning from Proverbs chapter 3. And now, verses 1 to 2. My child, remember my teachings and instructions and obey them completely. They will help you live a long and prosperous life. So immediately here, we are presented with one way to prepare for life. It's to obey God's teachings and instructions. Of course, which means know God's teachings and instructions. Paano ka naman susunod kung hindi mo alam? And of course, knowledge means willingness to be changed by it, to change our minds by what we know. Proverbs 3, 3 to 4. Let love and loyalty always show like a necklace and write them in your mind. God and people will like you and consider you a success. Pinapahalagahan dito mga kapatid. So love and be loyal to God and to people. Bakit may connection sa paghahanda sa mga disasters ng buhay, yung loyalty to God and to people? Because when you're loyal to God, God is loyal to you also. When you're loyal to people, not all of them might be loyal in return, but hindi ka masisiro nang merong loyalty rin sa'yo. So loyalty to God and loyalty to our fellow men are investments, are savings. Ipanalangin mo na hindi mo kailanganin ang tulong nila all your life, pero kung dumating yung panahon ng disaster that you would survive only on people's help, then meron ding loyal sa'yo kasi loyal ka rin sa kanila at naging loyal ka. God and people's loyalty to you can help you in times of disaster. It is a great insurance. And that is what the family is all about. Kaya nga ang mga sibilisasyon, ang mga saling lahi, patuloy, Kasi may family. Yung mga bata, hindi pa nila kayang alagaan ang sarili nila. Inaalagaan sila ng magulang nila. Kaya nagsusurvive sila through infancy and childhood to become adults. And when the children become adults, their parents who were formerly strong now become old. And the role is reversed. The children now take care of their parents. And then these children that took care of their parents will have children that they will take care of. And later on, children that will take care of them from generation to generation to generation. This is the unwritten contract of society, of civilization. Kaya mahalaga, loyal. May mga husbands magiging disloyal sa wife, iiwan ng wife and children, magpapasarap sa buhay. Pagkatapos, pagka nagkasakit at matanda na, babalik doon sa wife para magpaalaga. Magpaalaga sa mga anak. May mga wife na talagang martir at bayani, tinatanggap pa rin nila kumisan kung kahit bumalik sa kanila, wasak-wasak na taalagaan na lang. Pero mahirap yatang mahanap yun din ganong care from your children that you never cared for. Your children who sympathize with their mother. Or kung na-reverse ko yung nana yung umalis, which is rare, therefore the sympathy of the children is with the father. Wala kang tanim, anong aasahan mo nga anihin? Kaya sinasabi dito sa Psalm, sa Proverbs rather, be loyal to people. Be loyal to your family, be loyal to your community, be loyal to your nation even. Kasi pagka ang nation mo ay uh, bumagsak, hindi eh, kasama ka rin na babagsak noon. At yung mga loyalty natin at pagtulong sa kapwa, kuminsan konting-konti lang na itulong mo, maiksing panahon ka lang tumulong, pero nung ikaw ang nangailangan, at yung dati mong tinulungan ay umunlad, lumakas, Kumisan ang dami-dami-daming sukli sa'yo na higit-higit-higit sa itunulong mo sa kanya nung araw. Dahil maraming tao marunong tumanaw, marunong silang maging grateful. Kaya kahit sandali mo lang silang tunulungan, hindi nila nilimot. At nung ikaw na ang nangailangan, kahit kung totoo sila, nalugi na sila, 
kung may exchange rate ang tulungan ninyo, pero hindi ka pinagsasawaan kasi naaalala nila kung paano ka tumulong nung panahon ng pangangailangan. It is important to be loyal, especially to your spouse, to your children, to your parents. This is the basic unit of society. Ito ang sikreto kung bakit ang lahat ng henerasyon ng tao nag-survive sa lahat ng mga dilubyo, lahat ng mga gyera, lahat ng mga salot na dumating sa buhay ng tao sa planetang ito. We survive because of this unwritten contract of society. Pagka wala ka man lang ginagawa ng mabuti, wala kang tinutulungan, wala ka man lang dinadalaw pag may sakit, wala kang inaambaga na nangangailangan, mag-isip-isip ka. Paano kung dumating ang panahon na wala ka rin pa mga makuha, nagkaroon ka ng sudden disaster that is unexpected, a reversal of fortune, sino naman ang tutulong sa'yo? Wala ka namang ipinakitang tulong sa iba. Verses 5 to 6. With all your heart, you must trust the Lord and not your own judgment. Always let Him lead you and He will clear the road for you to follow. So trust the Lord and not yourself when you do not agree with God. Hindi naman laging hindi tayo magtitiwala sa sarili, pero kung ikaw mismo hindi ka sumasangayon doon sa ang linaw-linaw na kasulat sa Bible, pabalibalik ta rin mo man ang linaw, pinapalabo mo lang dahil ayaw mong sundin, yun ang sinasabing, don't trust in yourself, but trust in God. Be teachable, in other words. Allow your judgment to be tested, to be taught, and improved by the Word of God, by reason, by spirituality. And when you do that, you prepare yourself for whatever disaster is unexpected. Sometimes the disaster is even averted or prevented because you are spiritually in the right place. Kaya mahalaga talaga unahin ang Diyos. In everything you do, put God first and He will guide you and crown your efforts with success. Proverbs 3, 7 to 8. Don't ever think that you are wise enough, but respect the Lord and stay away from evil. This will make you healthy and you will feel strong. May relasyon pala yung health and strength with trusting the Lord, being wise enough to trust the Lord. Because we are never wise enough. Our knowledge is very little. Paul says that our knowledge is imperfect, our prophecy is imperfect. So we can and should continue learning, refining, and changing our thoughts. Because we have to change from glory to glory. How do you prevent disaster or prepare for disaster? Stay away from evil. Especially from evil thought that makes you think. Evil thoughts against other people that makes you think that you are right and they are wrong when you have not thoroughly examined your scholarship. So evil thoughts, evil deeds, evil ways, evil companions, and evil stubbornness can actually invite disaster. So pag nag-iingat tayo, lagi tayo nagiging wise, mga kapatid. Laging dinadala sa Panginoon at sa Kanyang karunungan ang ating mga desisyon it becomes preventive. We are able to prevent disaster. Kasi marami po mga disaster, hindi nga nangyari dahil nagpakatama tayo, kaya hindi natin alam that we were spared from it. That's why every day we must be thankful for the troubles that we never experience. Because otherwise, we could experience them. Kaya nagpapasalamat din tayo sa Panginoon doon sa mga hindi natin nararanas. Dahil salamat. Hindi natin nakikita kung paano niya tayo inililigtas lagi na lang sa mga nakaambang mga panganib sa ating buhay. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10, Honor the Lord by giving Him your money and the first part of all your crops. Then you will have more grain and grapes than you will ever need. How do you prepare for disaster? How do you prevent disaster? Especially poverty, give offerings to the Lord. The verses are unapologetic. While God may not need man's offerings, man needs to make offerings because he is designed by God to define his position in relationship to God by always making offerings. 
Yan po yung relasyon ng mga subject to their monarchs, ng mga citizens to their kings. They were always giving taxes, they were always offering services, they were always offering this and that to the monarch. At yun yung pattern na makikita natin doon sa pagbibigay natin lagi sa Diyos. Because we recognize that He is the monarch, He is the king, so we give offerings. God doesn't actually need our offerings, but we have a need to make such offerings to continue to affirm our citizenship, our belongingness to God. And the verses are clear, man's prosperity is premised by God on man's giving. Ang Diyos mismo ang nagpasya. You will be prosperous if you make your offerings. Mysteriously, this is an ever-present teaching and instruction everywhere in the Bible. And many people will attest to it na pag sinusunod nila, lumuluwag talaga yung buhay nila. Mahirap maunawaan kung minsan kung bakit, at kung hindi naunawaan, sundin na lang. Hindi ka naman malulugi dahil kung ang Diyos ang iyong pinararangalan sa iyong mga offerings, marunong naman talaga siya magsukli. At hindi naman tayo pwede magbigay ng offering ng hindi galing doon sa nauna na na ibinigay sa atin ng Diyos. 11 to 12, My child, don't turn away or become bitter when the Lord corrects you. The Lord corrects everyone He loves just as parents correct their favorite child. Appreciate God's correction. Yung pagtatama ng Diyos para hindi sala. Yung word na sala, pinagmula ng kasalanan na sa Southern Tagalog, sala means mintis. You miss the point. May binatukan, di mo tinamaan, sala. You miss the point. So yung kasalanan is not always naman yung napaka-evil mo dahil may kasalanan ka. Nagkasala ka lang, ibig sabihin, you miss the point. You did not reach the standard. You were not able to get to where you are expected to go. So kailangan willing tayo lagi magpatama. Parang istasyon ng radyo kumisan, lumilihes, itatama mo para ma-find you. Mga calibrations of machines, itinatama mo. Kailangan lagi tayo nagpapatama sa Panginoon. Nilikha tayo ng Panginoon kasabay ng planeta, kasabay ng nature, kasabay ng kanyang mga laws of nature, dapat tuned in tayo sa kanyang laws. Moral laws, natural laws, para kasama tayo sa agos, kasama tayo sa daloy, hindi tayo kasalungat, hindi tayo pagod na pagod, dahil kasama lang tayo sa umaandar na buhay na idinisenyo ng Panginoon. 13 to 15, God blesses everyone who has wisdom and common sense. Wisdom is worth more than silver. It makes you much richer than gold. Wisdom is more valuable than precious jewels. Nothing you want compares with her. So you want to avoid disaster? You want to be ready for disaster? Get, develop, and keep wisdom. Seek wise people for companionship. Kaya lang siyempre, kung ang kausap mo, mas maraming alam kesa sa'yo, mas nauna na siya sa isang landas na ngayon mo palang pupuntahan, pwedeng may mga ituturo siya o sasabihin na hindi mo maunawa. At kumisan dahil limited ang iyong pangunawa, pwede ka pang mag-isip na siya yung mali. Pwede ka pa magalit sa kanya. Pero dapat willing tayo to hear something even though we don't agree with it, to study it, to consider it. Halimbawa, meron kayong naging pagdedebate ng isang tao. Meron kang ideya one at siya ay may ideya two. Pag-aralan mo na yung ideya niya. Hindi lang para talunin mo siya sa debate. Kundi unawain mo talaga. Kasi pag naunawa mo yon, malalaman mo kung talagang mali yun o tama. Kung nakita mo talagang mali dahil pinag-aralan mo, hindi eh maipapanalo mo ang inyong diskusyon kasi pinag-aralan mo talaga. Pero dapat willing ka rin na sa iyong pag-aaral, kahit ang una mong layunin ay humanap ng mali doon para matalo mo, pero sa pag-aaral mo, kung napatunayan mong tama pala yung idea na yon, dapat willing ka ngayong isuko yung dati mong pananaw at doon ka sumunod sa ideya ang tama. Hindi ka talo noon. Natalo ka lang siguro sa debate, natalo ka sa diskusyon, pero pagka ikaw yung sumunod sa katotohanan na napatunayan mo matapos mong pag-aralan, hindi pagiging talo ang sumunod sa katotohanan at pagbitaw sa isang hindi katotohanan 
or a lesser truth. Many people, when they have to discuss with other people, especially when they have opposing ideas, they study only to prove their point at para panigasan yung point nila. Wala ka mapatututunan doon. Kasi decided ka na what you want to learn and what you are willing to learn. But when you objectively try to study the other person's point of view, in search for truth, not in search for victory in the debate, then you will find the truth. And that truth can set you free. Huwag na huwag kayong mag-aaral para lang panigasan ng inyong paninindigan. Mag-aaral talaga kayo para hanapin ang katotohanan. At kung yung katotohanan, hawak nung kalaban nyo, edi eh sabihin nyo, oy, tama pala yung hawak mo, yung katotohanan, makikihawak na rin ako, bibitawang ko itong dati kong hawak, panalo ka nun, hindi ka talo. You only look like a fool or a loser for one minute, but then you learn and you are a winner for life. Mahirap yung pinaninigasan mo ang point of view mo. Dapat willing ka na i-test yun. Willing ka na ma-challenge yun. Because truth will always prevail. Kumisan, hindi mo lang madaling maintindihan. Kumisan, masyado ka lang emosyonal. Nauna yung emosyon. Kumisan, masyado kang defensive. Dahil akala mo, baka may mawala sa'yo pag nagpalit ka ng pananaw. Pero ang tunay na pag-aaral at laging pinapahalagahan ng Diyos to seek wisdom is the willingness to surrender an inferior idea to a superior one if it has proven to be superior after an impartial investigation. Kaya dapat hindi emosyonal ang mga tao. Ang mga emosyonal, kikitid ng kikitid ang kutak. Iisipin niya, tama siya, mali ang lahat. And this is the greatest mistake. So wisdom is the secret to long life. That's what the verses say. Wisdom is the secret to wealth, to honor, even to pleasure and safety. Wisdom is the secret to meaningful life and to happiness. Kaya ang sinasabi ng problem, seek it. It's important. At ang masarap nito sa buhay, maraming mga tao na bago ka pa man nag-isip ng isang bagay, matagal na pala niyang pinag-isipan, So, makakatipid ka ng oras at pagod para pag-isipan yun kung makikinig ka lang sa kanya. Siyempre, sasalain mo ang pinapakinggan mo. Kumisan, sa initial na pakikinig mo, parang ayaw mo dahil kakaiba. Pero, habang nag-iisa ka, salain mo uli, pag-aralan mo uli, malay mo tama. Ano ba namang nawala sa'yo na pag-aralan mo yan? Kung matangos mong pag-aralan, napatunayan mo pa rin mali, edi wag. Pero, i-consider mo muna. Huwag mong isasara yung usapan. Huwag mo lalagyan ng period, lalo hindi ka naman expert. Lalo't hindi ka naman nagbuhos ng maraming oras sa pananaliksik at pag-aaral. You must be willing to be taught. Even though what is being taught, you could go against everything else that you have known all your life. At kahit isang taon na lang na natira sa iyong buhay, at least yung huling taon na yun, nalagay ka sa isang superior truth, then you move from glory to glory. Only a fool does not want to change his mind. Of course, you don't change your mind. Pagka napatunayan naman tama ka, pero patunayan mo muna. Subject your ideas to the test. Proverbs 3, 19-20 By His wisdom and knowledge, the Lord created heaven and earth. By His understanding, He let the ocean break loose and clouds release the rain. Paano daw nilikha ng Diyos ang lupa, ang langit at ang lahat-lahat sa pamamagitan ng kanyang superior na karunungan? Creation is founded on and maintained by God's wisdom. Kaya hindi po ako komportable pag sinasabi nilang masama ang panahon. Bakit masama? May bagyo. Kailangan natin ang bagyo. The winds drive pollution away. Nahuhugasan ang buong syudad na ang dumidumi ng malakas na ulan. Yung mga kidlat, they charge the atmosphere with electrons that we need. So that there's a balance in the atmosphere. Huwag ka lang ang patama sa kidlat. Nagmumukha lang masama kung tinamaan ka siyempre. So huwag ka magpakalat-kalat pag kumikidlat. No? Huwag kang tumira doon sa pwedeng daanan ng baha dahil pag marami talagang tubig, may temporary baha. Huwag mong barahan yung mga kanal at mga ilog para sandali lang yung baha lumampas na. E kung ang daming bara, nagtatagal. Nagmumukha tuloy masama. Walang masamang panahon. Kasi ang Diyos ang lumikha ng mga seasons, ng weather, and we need all that for balance. 
So, sabi niya, by his wisdom and knowledge, the Lord created heaven and earth. So, the wise will harmonize with creation and the laws of nature. How do you prepare for disaster? Ayaw mong bahain ka? Do what you can not to live in the paths of waters. Ayaw mong ay kamatay, maguhuan ka ng dahil sa lindol. Kung kaya mo, sikapin mong huwag kang tumira sa mga pwedeng gumuho. O tibayan mo ang iyong ginagawa. May loss of nature kasi. Hindi natin pwedeng labanan. Makiayon ka na lang, alamin mo yung mga batasun din mo para ma-minimize ang possibility of disaster. Mahina ang katawan mo, puyat ka. Kaya ka nga pinapaantok ng Diyos eh. Pagka mahina ang katawan mo, yung pagod na pagod ka, kasi para magpahinga ka, huwag ka umalis ng bahay. Pag mahina yung katawan mo, puyat ka, tapos lumabas ka ng bahay, nakipagsiksik ka sa kamatao, may mga may sakit doon, bumahing sila, umubo na, natamaang ka, nalanghap mo, eh mahina yung katawan mo ng oras na yon, mahawa ka, kasi wala ka resistance. Dapat tayong nakikinig sa katawan natin. Yung mga iba, pagod na pagod, antok na antok, anong gagawin? Iinom sila ng mga artificial drink na ang dami-daming asukal para magising. Kaya ka pinapaantok ng Diyos para ka matulog. Pipilitin mo nga yung hindi matulog dahil may gagawin ka. Ano mangyayari? Sinisira mo yung katawan mo dahan-dahan. Once in a while, I see drivers doing this kasi mahaba yung biyahe, umiinom. Pero dapat sandali lang yung iinom ka ng artificial energy drink. Pag ubus na talaga yung tunay na energy mo, ipagpapahinga mo yan, kakain ka, yun ang gusto ng Diyos. Pag nakabalik na yung energy mo, tsaka ka uli dapat kumilos. Pero sabi nga na iba, emergency case ito, eh, alam nga naman hindi ako mag-drive, eh, naan sa gitna na ito ng biyahe. Pero dapat hindi madalas na ganun. Pag inaantok ka, dapat itulog. Yung iba naman kasi kaya inaantok during the day, eh, madaling araw na, nagpe-Facebook pa. Ayaw pang matulog. No? So, kailangan itulog mo. Law of nature. So, you are wise. Do not fight nature. Blend with it. 21 to 26. My child, use common sense and sound judgment. Always keep them in mind. They will help you live a long life and a beautiful life. You will walk safely and never stumble. You will rest without a worry and sleep soundly. So, don't be afraid of sudden disasters or storms that strike those who are evil. You can be sure that the Lord will protect you from harm. And the team formula, how to protect ourselves from harm and disaster, live a godly life, follow God's laws. Even natural laws are God's laws. Be loyal to people. Be loyal to God. Even if the disaster is not prevented, when it does happen, there are people who are loyal to you and they will help you. They will help you recover and get on with life. Wisdom, godly living, protects people from life's sudden disasters. Nakakatulong yung insurance, nakakatulong yung savings, nakakatulong yung kung ano-ano pa, Pero number one, godly living. Wisdom. Preventive pa. Hindi lang curative, preventive pa. Of course, when you say prevention, you mean prevention of disaster. Or when we say protection. When God protects you, it means there's prevention of disaster. Or when the disaster happens, there is empowerment to survive. Dalawa lang naman yan eh. Huwag mangyari yung mahirap o mapalakas ka sa oras ng hirap para mapalampasan mo. 27 to 35. Do all you can for everyone who deserves your help. Don't tell your neighbor to come back tomorrow if you can help today. Don't be mean to neighbors who trust you. Don't argue just to be arguing when you haven't been hurt. Here's another repetition and emphasis on how to prepare for disaster. Be nice. Be good to people. Help people. Help them in a timely manner. Huwag nang paghihintayin pa kung pwede nang tulungan ngayon. 
Huwag nang patagalin. At kung pwedeng tulungan ng buo, buuin. Reparasyon yan. Huwag ka daw palaaway. Huwag ka lagi nakikipagtalo. Kasi pag nakikipagtalo ka, kahit tinatanin mo, negative seeds na pwedeng bumalik sa iyong buhay. Don't be jealous of cruel people or follow their example. The Lord doesn't like anyone who is dishonest, but He lets good people be His friends. So you want to be a friend of God? Be honest. Be good. He places a curse on the home of everyone who is evil. But He blesses the home of every good person. Ito yung unseen blessing eh. Kasi hindi nakikita ng mata. But the word of God is true. God protects the homes of those who please Him. Of those who are godly. The Lord sneers at those who sneer at Him. But He is kind to everyone who is humble. You will be praised if you are wise, but you will be disgraced if you are a stubborn fool. So wisdom prevents disasters from happening. Wisdom helps one if and when disasters come. So wisdom, as we have seen here, is defined as being good to people. Hindi lang yung alam mo yung mga philosophies, alam mo yung theories, alam mo yung mga high-sounding ideas. Streetwise wisdom is being good to people. If you are good to people, you are wise. Being good, doing good is man's best preparation for and man's best help in times of disaster. Doing good positions man to receive God's protection and restoration. And very importantly, other people's help. Napakahalaga. Pag bata ka pa, hindi mo pa alam ang halaga ng tulong ng kapwa. Merong isang senior person, kakain siya sa isang fast food, daladala niya yung senior card niya, at nasanay siya na merong pila na special para sa seniors. E tinanggal nung fast food na yon yung special pilahan. Pumunta ngayon sa harapan nitong matanda at ipinakita niya yung kanyang senior's card at sabi niya doon sa sales clerk, sabi, ineng, senior ako, pakiuna mo ako. Ay, pila po kayo doon. Ayaw siyang pansinin. Pumunta siya doon sa isa pa, ayaw din siyang pansinin. Ipinatawag niya yung manager niya, manager, ang sabi rin, pumila na lang po kayo, maiksi lang naman po ang pila. Ang hindi nila biglang inaasahan, biglang nang isa itong matanda, at biglang nang inig, pinagpawisan ng malamig, yung pala ito ay diabetic. At nag-hypoglycemia siya, bumababa yung sugar, na halos ikakamata yun ang mga tao. Natakot ngayon silang lahat kung ano nangyayari sa matandang ito. Kung pwede nilang subuan nila agad ng pagkain na libre at lahat-lahat. So nung mahimas-masan, sabi sa kanila ng matanda, kami mga senior, kaya binibigyan ng ganyang pribilehyo, hindi lang dahil matanda kami. Kasi mahihina na ang katawan namin, meron kami mga sakit. Hindi namin kayang tumayo ng matagal sa pila. Pag bigla kaming nagutom, biglang-bigla, pwede naming ikahimatay. Kaya kami binibigyan ng ganyang pribilehyo, hindi lang yan pag-abuso dahil lang matanda kami. Hindi kasi naintindihan ng mga bata eh. Ang babata kasi ng mga empleyado sa fast foods. Akala nila, arte-arte naman ang matandang to, iksi naman ang pila, ayaw pang pumilang. Gusto pa, special. Kasi malalakas pa katawan nila, hindi nila alam. Alam niyo sabi ng matandang yun sa mga tao, tatanda din kayo. Malalaman niyo rin kung bakit. So it is the reason why we are not kind, because we don't understand. Just be kind. Even if you don't understand, how can you go wrong if you're kind? Kung minsan meron nagmamadali sa pila, kung pwede mo naman pagbigyan. Hindi mo naman ikamamatay na pagbigyan siya. Hindi ka naman emergency case. Baka siya may emergency case eh. Kung minsan eh, sa driving, ganun eh. Merong, bakit pa nagmamadali ito sobra? Hindi mo alam kung biglang tumawag pala yung asawa niya dahil mga nganak na o kung ano man ang dahilan. People have reasons and seldom that we understand their reasons. That's why it's just good to be kind. How do you prepare for life's disasters? Ang mga bata kasi, ganun talaga. It's one of the definition ng bata. Hindi niya alam na may mga disaster pala ang buhay. 
hindi niya alam na pwede palang mangyari yung lumabo ang yung mata, pwede palang humina ang yung tuhod, humina ang yung resistensya. Kaya, kumisan, hindi sensitive. How do you prepare? Be wise. Know what happens in people's lives so that you could prevent the mistakes that happen in theirs. One excellent way to prepare for your forthcoming disaster, which you all pray will not happen, is to help others in their disasters now. Dalawa lang ang pwede niyong pagpiliin, pagpilian na kalagayan, mga kapatid. Sa oras na ito, sa present time, either may disaster kayo at kailangan nyo ng tulong, o wala kayong disaster. Pasalamat kayo sa Diyos at tumulong kayo doon sa merong mga disaster. That's how you prepare for the disasters that might come in your life. It is such a great privilege to live one day, one week, one month na walang disaster na major. Sa ganun mga privilege moments, you reach out and help people who are needy. That's how you strengthen yourself. That's how you fortify yourself for the time of your own weakness. Save, invest, prepare for disasters by doing good. It is important to extend kindness to the needy so that when you become the needy one, kindness will be extended from all directions with you wondering where they ever come from. We are never sure. Every time there's a possibility that fortunes can change, that horror might befall one's life. When it is not happening, be in a giving mode. Be kind. Be helpful. Aming Ama, sa bawat isa ngayon dito na hindi dumaranas ng disaster or crisis, salamat po. At sa bawat isa naman na dumaranas ito, kayo Panginoon ang magbalik sa mga taong ito ng anumang ginawa nilang mabuti noong araw para mga buting ito yung magawa sa kanila ngayon, even by complete strangers. We completely rely on you, O God, Man can prepare, man can do things, but the decision and the final judgment is in your hands. May you find us pleasing. May we give you pleasure, O God, so that we may get and receive the blessings that you give to us, though we may not deserve them. Turuan niyo kami, Panginoon, ay pagdiwang ang mga panahon na hindi kami nahihirapan at gawin namin itong policy na tumulong sa mga nahihirapan. Teach us to prepare for life's disasters. Teach us to prevent them from happening. And when they do happen, teach us to go through them with dignity, with strength. And may the things that we have done before be like seeds that we planted. Allow us to enjoy the fruits of what we have planted. Teach us to be wise. So that every time that we are not needy, we will be helping the needy and we will be planting good seeds. Pagbulay-bulayan natin mga kapatid at nawa maging sensitive tayo sa disaster ng iba. Huwag tayong magbingi-bingihan. Huwag tayong magbulag-bulagan. Teach us, Father, to please you with our goodness, with our godliness. Be alone with God for a while. Find comfort in God's Spirit if you are going through a difficult time. And pray for deliverance, pray for people who will help you, that the Lord can assign and the Lord can send your way. Meanwhile, everyone else who are not in a crisis situation, look for someone to help. Be thankful and prepare for what might happen. Dear Lord, in silence, continue to teach us.